Okay, so now we're going to go to the next sheet, which is the bearing top. Let me open this in paint. And right away, I'm going to get this going. And let's zoom in just a little bit. All right. So I'm going to right click on the top and say open. And you can also do that with drawing views. Right away, I see this plane right here. You never, ever, ever leave a plane visible in a part. So I'm going to right click on that plane. And right here, I don't have to dig and find where it is. I'm just going to go to visibility and take that off. If you click on that, it'll take off visibility. And I'm going to save that part like that. Now going over here to the changes. It says change the center holes diameter to 0.75 to 0.82. So let's see how this is made real quick. I have an extrusion, round extrusion, a hole in the center, and it has a depth of two. So we may need to make that through wall, right? And then we have a counter bore, a circular pattern of that. We have an extrusion there. We have a mirror. It says reorder feature problems encountered. It's because there's an error. It's okay, just say okay, I don't care. It mirrored this over. The fillets are put on the edges. There's a cut right here, an angle cut. Fillets put on there. This one also has some information missing and then fillets put on the other side. Okay. So we're going to fix this stuff, but first I'm going to go to this one right here where it says add a counter bore to this hole. I'm going to add a counter bore. Well, if this hole is created on the top face and I need a counter bore on the back side, I've got a problem because wherever your sketch is, is where your counter counter bore is going to be. So let's go to that hole. And let's look at that sketch. If I just highlight that sketch, it's on the top face. Now I'm gonna teach you guys something that probably we didn't intend to teach in this class, but it's good to know. If you right click on a sketch, you have several options. I can edit the sketch, I can share it, I can go to properties of the sketch, whatever, but I can, I can redefine a sketch. What does that mean? I had to figure this out because it's different in every software. Redefining the sketch means changing the face that the sketch is made of. If I can change the face from the top to the bottom, then I can just change this hole to a counterbore and it'll go all the way through and I'll be done. I don't have to go and put another feature on there or delete this one, create it from the back. You can do that. This is another way to do it. If you want to delete that center hole and make it from the back and make it centered, it's got to be right. This is, this is kind of a cool way to do this. So right click on the sketch. The sketch is the main problem here. It's on the wrong face. And redefine it. And it's saying, tell me what face you want it on. It shows me what face it's on. So I'm going to flip it over and select this face. And it gives me a problem. I'm going to show you. It's so simple. So you see this hole right here? If I edit this hole, it's going the wrong way. Because it was from the other face coming through the part. Now it's on this face. It just needs to be flipped back in its direction. Now this hole will be through all, right? So now this part is going to make, um, I'm going to flip it in direction. I just want to show you, I'm just going to make it whatever it was, right? It was, it was this before. I just flipped this direction and I say, okay, except everything is happy now. All that was wrong was the hole was on this side and it was coming through this way. It didn't know to flip itself. So now I'm going to go back to this hole right here. 
And it says change the diameter as whole from 0.75 to 0.82. So I'm going to make this 0.82. And make it a through hole. So I'm going to say through all. And then it says add a 1.3 counter bore with a depth of 0.27 to the back of the part. Well, now I'm on the back of the part. Centered on this. So if I just make this a counter bore now, I have 0.82, and if I hit tab, it says 1.3 diameter, tab, 0.27 counter bore. I don't have to add another one. I just change the face that that hole's on and change that hole into a counter bore. I don't have to delete it. I don't have to do anything else. I just redefine where that sketch is, flip it to the correct direction, and make the changes. Okay, now it's still got some problems. So you can see that this is on the back now. It's going all the way through. And we're going to look at this problem that this has. All right, so if the extrusion has information missing, dive down into the sketch. The sketch is actually making the extrusion have the problem. If anything else is associated with this extrusion, it's also going to have a problem. So let's go into the sketch that created the whole scenario. Double click on the sketch. Sometimes sketches lose their reference and it turns pink. So if it changed sizes or it got deleted, it changed to pink. So I'm going to delete it. I just deleted that circle and now everything is good. We say finish the sketch. Now everything is happy. Everything is happy because this extrusion was associated with the mirror. And then this cut was associated with that extrusion too. So when you have a problem on one thing, it just kind of ripples down. Now it says change the diameter of the 4.56 diameter holes. So where are those? Those are the counter bores that are patterned to 0.57. Don't change the pattern, turn to your original hole. So if I double click on this hole or right click at it, the definition, however you want to do it, this changes to 0.57. And I'll say, okay, this part is complete. It does not have any errors and we are done with it. I've made this part better already. So if I go into this assembly, I'm going to hit my update button because I see my lightning bolt. And you see that we have a counter bore here now for this other half of the sleeve. It's larger. This hole is larger. The holes, the clearance holes are larger for the bolts. So if I go to analyze interference again and draw a box around this and say, okay, I got nothing. So it says there are six interferences. We have three in threads and three in non-thread content center parts. So you're always going to have interferences between threads and the threaded hole. That just that just happens because the threaded holes are made to the minor diameter and the threaded shaft is to the major. So don't ever worry about hardware, okay? But it doesn't have any problem with these three parts. So now our three parts are done and we're gonna come back next time and we're gonna go into the assembly is updated. The assembly is great. And if I wanted to go to view, and I go where I made this a half section view, go to the end and end the section view. Now I've got my whole view again. You can see that the three inch protrudes out the top. The four inch protrudes out the bottom equidistantly. And that's why I changed the two to the three because I didn't want to change the constraints and flip this part over. And that's what happens if you don't change the two to the three. It's already oriented correctly. So I'm going to save this assembly. And now when we come back, we're going to go and look at the IPN and the drawing next and get that all updated to Rev A changes. I'm so sorry for the hiccup, you guys. I'm going to go check Blackboard and make sure that it is working now. And I want you to get these parts changed for the ECO and you can use these ECO markups. You can print them out or save them down however you want. 
But I think this is a lot easier when you see, you know, when you mark up your ECO and then make your changes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night.